They may not be the most vibrant, but these corals are healthy and resilient and represent a major lifeline for the most spectacular ecosystem of its kind on the planet. They're part of the very first trial of in vitro fertilization for corals, or coral IVF. Coral larvae are collected during what are called mass spawning events. They're rare annual moments linked to the cycles of the moon. Then baby corals are cultivated in floating nursery pools before being transplanted onto damaged areas of the reef. Four years later, the original population has grown large and even survived coral bleaching events. This proves that the larval restoration technique works just as we predicted. And we can grow very large corals from tiny microscopic larvae within just a few years. Scientists say the success of this project is critical for the Great Barrier Reef. The UN-listed World Heritage Site runs more than 2,000 kilometers along Australia's northeast coast, but it's being severely damaged by climate change and ocean warming. It's lost more than half of its coral in the past three decades, impacting many other species that depend on it. At the beginning of December, its status was downgraded to critical and deteriorating. That prompted environmental experts to call on the Australian government to step up its efforts to protect the reef. It's abundantly clear that climate impacts are real and climate impacts are happening now. What we need is a response to this that is immediate and significant. We don't need to be towing a line, we need to be blasting past it, and we need to be blasting past it uh, in leadership as well. Broad policy change may take longer to achieve, but Harrison and his team say they're optimistic their technique will work. Soon, these will be the world's first transplanted coral populations to start reproducing on their own. And it's hoped they'll start to regrow what's been lost on the Great Barrier Reef. Alexandra Byers, Al Jazeera.